truths from out of thy law. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. So as uh, we've been doing over the past few Wednesdays, in fact, in our church, even before the lockdown, um, I love the book of Psalms. And so we are currently going through selected Psalms, selected scriptures from the Psalms. And tonight um, I would like to cover Psalm 113, Psalm 113, beautiful Psalm. Now, last week we spoke from Psalm 135. And if you remember, I gave you four good reasons to praise the Lord, four good reasons to praise the Lord, uh, using an outline adapted by um, or adapted from Warren Wiersbe. And I had entitled it, Why It's Time to Praise the Lord or Praise God. And number one, it was for His goodness. Number two, for His grace. Three, for His greatness. And number four, for His governance or government or His sovereignty. His goodness, His greatness, His grace and His governance. And I thought I would like to build on that and give you another psalm of praise this week. And um, in case you're asking why, well, I, th I believe that our God is worthy to be praised. And more so during tough times like these, it's absolutely essential that we keep on praising God. Another reason is because we have so much to be thankful for. And then also because, um, you know, I've been looking for a text for Mother's Day. And in fact, this, this very psalm could have been preached on Mother's Day. And I'll show you just now with the last verse of this psalm. So really, based on those reasons, I thought it would be quite appropriate for us just to just to dwell on Psalm 113 for a few minutes tonight. Again, it's a short psalm. It only has nine verses. It's an obvious sign of praise. It starts off with praise ye the Lord. Praise, another word for praise, hallelujah. I was telling a few couples today that if there's one thing I miss is, is the feedback from, from having a, 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 from being in church, you know, Someone shouting out hallelujah or amen, or praise the Lord. Um, my family tends to be more on the quiet side, so I'm not getting, getting enough amens. Um, but I trust that when you read the psalm, you'll shout out those words, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. So it's an obvious psalm of praise. In fact, you'll see that it starts and ends with the, with the, with the phrase, praise ye the Lord, verse 1, and at the end of verse 9, praise ye the Lord. Praise is mentioned three times in verse 1 alone. It's mentioned five times throughout the whole psalm. So you can see praise ye the Lord is really the theme and the, and the thrust of this psalm, Psalm 113. Um, you can divide the psalm into two parts, and again, taking from the, the outline that I used last week. Number one, you, we, we praise the Lord for His greatness, which is the first half of the psalm, Psalm, one, psalm uh, 113, verse 1 to 5. And then the second part, we praise the Lord for His grace, in verse 6 to 9. But it's actually a psalm of two contrasts, two opposing ends. On the one hand, you have God's greatness, and on the other hand, you have God's grace. In fact, one could well put it like this, God is so great, yet He is still so gracious. So great, yet so gracious. The Believer's Bible, Believer's Bible sums up this psalm by saying, the first five verses present God as the one who is infinitely high. And the last four verses present God as the one who is intimately nigh, close, gracious. Infinitely high and intimately nigh. I thought that was quite, quite nice. So if you read the first verse, Psalm 113, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In fact, last week we did Psalm 135. And verse 1 of Psalm 135 is virtually identical to verse 1 of Psalm 113. And so immediately it starts with an instruction, a strong command to us to praise the Lord three times. And then in verse 2 and 3, again, we see all these commands to praise the Lord. And you know what struck me is that one would think that Christians need never be reminded, nor instructed, nor commanded to praise God. And here's the psalmist. In this case, instructing the children of Israel. But in our case, we are getting this message. It's imperative. We are commanded to praise the Lord. And I find it sad because it implies that we as Christians are not praising God enough. And here this verse, this whole psalm just envelops everything around praise. Praise ye the Lord. Now, I'd like us just to do a little exercise uh, in school or in college or wherever. 
um, whenever you are to analyze a particular subject or a topic or or a paragraph or, or anything, um, we call it the 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 the, the exercise WWWH exercise, the why, who, when, where, what, and how. And it's very, very easy just to get a just the gist of the psalm if you do it according to that outline. And let's do it very quickly. And you can jot it down. What must we do? Very easy. What must we do? Praise. Praise is the thrust of the psalm mentioned over and over. Right? Then who must we praise? Praise ye the Lord. And not just the Lord, the Lord capital letters. What does that imply? Speaks of Jehovah, the eternal one, the sovereign one, the self-existent one, the one who's the I am, right? The one who never changes. Jehovah, the Lord God. That's whom we must praise. Then who must do the praising? The second part of verse one. Oh, he servants of the Lord. Who are his servants? Well, us, us who have been redeemed by him. And if you, on a literal and a, on a very simplistic scale, what is the duty of a servant? The duty of a servant is to obey his master. And so therefore the duty of us as servants of God is to be obedient in the sphere of praise. Praise ye the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord. It is incumbent upon us to praise the Lord as his children, as his servants. So who must we be, who must do the praising? Us servants of the Lord. Now, how often must we praise the Lord? How often must we praise the Lord? Look at the second part of verse 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. So in other words, from this time forth, it means continually. Therefore, it means all the time. How often must we do it? All the time. There should not be a single moment that we are not praising the Lord. Look at verse 3. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. In other words, all day long. How often must we praise the Lord continually, all the time, all day long? Literally, someone has said, from the first moment of consciousness in the morning to the last waking moment before sleep. In other words, you praise him when you get up in the morning and you praise God when you get to the end of the day, tired as you may feel. You praise God during the day for the good things that are happening to you and even for the bad and sad and challenging things that you are going through. And then you praise him at night for God getting you through the day and through every single situation. Praise God continually and all the time from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Isn't uh, Matt Redmond's song, 10,000 Reasons, so appropriate? The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever man pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Where must we praise the Lord? Where must we praise the Lord? Verse 3, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Where does the sun come up? In the east. Where does the sun go down? In the west. So that speaks of everywhere. There is not a single place on planet earth where we cannot praise the Lord. And every single place on earth, we should praise the Lord. So wherever you find yourself tonight, whether it be in Bosmont, in Florida, in Nuclear, in Geneva, Switzerland, in Syracuse, New York, wherever you find yourself, it is an appropriate time to praise God from east to west. I like what Warren Weasby says. He's always challenging us. He says, if you find yourself in a place where you cannot praise the Lord, then maybe you do not belong there. Interesting, maybe you do not belong. There's not a single place where we cannot praise the Lord. Therefore, we ought to praise the Lord. Time and place, always. All the time. And all the time, everywhere, in every single place, praise the Lord. Let's carry on. What? The what? What must we praise the Lord for? What must we praise the Lord? Well, there it is in verse 4. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Number one, we praise him for his greatness. Why? He is high above all nations. But we also praise him for his glory. His glory is above the heavens. And then thirdly, we also pray to him. We praise the Lord because of his, I couldn't find another G. He's incomparable. He is matchless. Look at verse 5. 
who is like unto the Lord our God? It's a rhetorical question. Who is like unto our God? Nobody. He is matchless. He is incomparable. He is unique. No one can be compared to almighty sovereign Jehovah God seated on the throne who dwelleth on high. So what must we praise the Lord for? His greatness. What must we praise the Lord for? His glory and his matchlessness. You know, I came across an article. I was asking myself the question, just how high is God? How high is God above the heavens? And how, so, so the question one can ask is, how long does it take to get to the end of the universe? I asked my son, Matthew, the scientist, how long? And um, his answer was very close. In fact, just a little bit further than this answer. So just this is from uh, um, USA Today, you know, NASA and sending people up into space. So they estimate to, to get from Earth to the moon, one to three days, to get to Mars between 150 to 300 days, to get to the end of our solar system will take you 40 years, to get to the nearest star, 80,000 years, to get to the nearest galaxy, 749 million years, to get to the end of the known universe, 220 and how many noughts, 3, 6, 9, 12, 12 noughts after that, that's 225 trillion years it will take to get from here to the end of the universe and you know what god is higher than that that must give us an idea of how great our god is and how small we are god's glory is above all that the end of the universe knowing god's glory is above all that and all the heavens should really put us in our proper place that is how great and mighty our God is. He rules over the entire creation and universe. And therefore nothing happens apart from God's will, God's sovereign will, and God's permission. As I've mentioned, I've spoken over and over about the sovereignty of God. That's why Jeremiah could say, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy outstretched arm and great power. Nothing is too difficult for thee. God is great. Paul put it nicely in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Therefore, unto him be glory. That is why God deserves our praise. He is great. He is in glory. And he is matchless and incomparable. Second part of the song. Despite all this, despite the greatness of God, there is something special. Praise his name, as I mentioned about the Believer's Bible. The one who is infinitely high is also intimately nigh. There is nothing too great for him, and no one is too small for him. Look at verse 6, 7, 8, and 9. Who humbleth himself. The same God who is so great. The same God who is so matchless. The same God humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. And lifteth the needy out of the dunghill or out of the ashes. The same God who is so high and mighty and in above the heavens and in glory says that he may set him with the princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh a barren woman to keep house and to be joyful, a joyful mother to her children. Praise ye the Lord. Our God is great. Amen. But yet, not so great that he cannot come down to planet earth to help the poor. Not so great that he cannot come down to lift the needy. And not so great that he cannot give the barren woman a home. That's grace. So not only do we have the greatness of God, we have the grace of God. Yes, God is great. Yet in his greatness, he still finds it within himself to come down from heaven. Come down to see what is happening here on the earth. In his grace, he condescends is the word to intervene graciously in the affairs of us mere mortal human beings. Doesn't this remind you, Carlo, Psalm 8 verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? God's grace. And so the psalmist gives two examples of how gracious God is. The first in verse 7 of Psalm 113, He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. And lifted the needy out of the dunghill. And that, of course, is taken, you can mark in your ref in, in the Bible, in the margin there. It's taken from 1 Samuel 2, verse 8, almost verbatim as Hannah, Hannah is praying. 
And the Bible is saying here, God lifts the poor and the needy from the depths up to the heights. And I couldn't help but think of Psalm 40 verse 2. He brought me out up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. My beloved, that is God's grace. Only God, not the government, not Sasa, only God can lift the lowest of mankind out of their poverty and degradation and place them in a position of power and honor. And so when we are, in, when we are down in the dumps, down in the dust, he raises us up. When we are low and needy, he lifts us up from the ashes. C.H. Spurgeon puts it like this, when no one, no hand but his can help, he interposes and the work is done. And see where God places us in verse 8, that he may set him with the princes, even with the princes of his people. You know, God doesn't do things in half measure, someone has said. God gives his best to those who wait on him. And when God does the raising of the poor from the dust, and when God does the lifting of the needy from the ashes, when God exalts, he takes us from poverty to princes. And that's grace. I couldn't help but think of what happened to Joseph in the book of Genesis. From the pot, from the pit, to Potiphar, to prison, and eventually to prime minister in the palace. Only God can do that. Second, in God's grace, verse 9, he maketh the barren woman to keep house. I referred to Mother's Day earlier. This could have been a very good text for Sunday. In the East, if you know about history, and especially in Israel, a barren woman was a social outcast. And yet a mother, having a, uh, or being able to bear children, motherhood was a crowning achievement. A barren woman was a disappointment to her family, a disappointment to her husband, and a disappointment to other women, and even to herself. And in, and in historical and in traditional times, she was not supposed to have a house until she had children. But look at God. Yet God, despite his greatness, despite God being high above the nations and the heaven, in God's grace and God's mercy, God is able to give a barren woman a child and a home. In God's grace, God makes her a joyful mother to her children. And you know, that's why I love Psalm 127 verse 3. When, when patients come to see me, families come to see me, and they want to talk to me about infertility, and they want to talk to me about having children. And now gynees have said, you'll never be able to have a child. And doctor, what is it that we can do? I said, here's my prescription for you. And I write on a prescription pad, Psalm 127 verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. That's God's grace. And that's what God can do, even though God is so great. God's grace. Almost done. The last W, the last W. Why do we praise the Lord? I can summarize. Why do we praise the Lord? Because of who God is. Who is God? God is great. Great is high above the nations and God in, in his glory is above the heavens. So we praise God because of who God is and we praise God for what God does. What does God do? God is grace, gracious. God is a God of grace. And you know the better you know God's greatness, the more you will praise him. And the more you experience God's grace in your daily walk with God, the more you will praise Him. And so my question to us tonight is, where do you find yourself? Where are you tonight? What are you going through? Do you feel down and poor and needy? Are you feeling abandoned? Does your soul, your very soul, feel barren, infertile spiritually? Can I tell you something? God cares. God specializes in showing compassion and grace and mercy. And God specializes in showing grace and compassion and mercy to the low, to the needy, to those who are in the dust and the ashes right now. All you have to do is two things. Make a note. Only, you just have to do two things. One, call on Him. Pray. Plead with God. And let God come through for you. Let God provide and let God prosper you and let God meet your need. If you are feeling poor and helpless tonight, call upon the great God to be gracious to you. And watch how God, by his greatness and his grace, does marvelous and mighty deeds for those who are in need and who are in distress. So number one, call on him. Number two, praise him. 
praise Him. Don't wait until things get better. Praise Him now in your situation. Keep on praising God daily through your problems and your despair. Always, all the time, and all the time, everywhere. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. It says nothing about what condition you are in. Our instruction as servants of God is to praise Him. And see how the psalm ends in verse 9, the last line. Praise ye the Lord. Exactly as it started. Verse 1, praise ye the Lord. Full circle. Again, C.H. Spurgeon, and I'll close with a quotation from him. The psalm is a circle, ending where it began, praising the Lord from its first syllable to its last syllable. May our life psalm partake of the same character and never know a break or never know a conclusion. In an endless circle, let us bless the Lord whose mercies never cease. And my prayer for us tonight, is that our lives may be a picture of Psalm 113, a never-ending psalm of praise from beginning to end. No matter what we are going through, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, the Lord's name is to be praised. We praise Him for His greatness, but we also praise Him for His grace that can lift us up when we are low, can lift us up when we are poor and needy, and can lift us up when our souls are barren and empty and have nothing to give, nothing to say, nothing to do, Our responsibility, keep on praising and watch how God's grace and God's mercy comes through. When you wake up tomorrow, new mercies every day. When you wake up tomorrow, you find God's sufficient grace to get you through the day. Wake up praising God, praise God through the day, and you go to bed tonight with a praise, a heart full of praise and thanksgiving. Truly, He is worthy of our worship and our praise. Let's pray together. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful psalm. A psalm that spells it out so easily that thou art worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. From now, from eternity past to eternity future, every day, continually, wherever we are, whenever, may we have hearts that are full of praise because of who you are and because of what you are doing because of what you have done, what you are doing right now, and what you can still do in our lives. And Father, we thank you that nothing is too hard for thee. I pray for our families tonight. I pray for those who are burdened with pain, burdened with hearts of sorrow. I pray for those who are burdened because of their financial or material needs. Lord, we thank you that you are so great, yet you can come down and be gracious and lift us up out of our poverty and out of our neediness. Please, Lord, according to your riches in glory, supply our people's needs. Supply whatever it is that they need according to thy perfect will and plan and purpose for thee. And even through our struggles, may we be filled with hearts of praise and thanksgiving from morning through to noon till we put our heads down on our pillows for a, sleep, for a good night's sleep. We thank you, dear Lord. We pray and ask all this now in Jesus' name. Amen.